Bible. Um, um, turn to uh, the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter 13. Uh, the New King James Version translation um, is one I selected uh, for this um, message, beginning with verse 30. Y'all still turning? <laughs> Numbers go back to the old, you know. It's to the left. <laughs> and then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There, were, there we saw the giants. The descendants of Anak came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. Amen. Amen. This is my Bible, this is my Bible. God's, holy God's holy word. It is a lamp unto my feet, a, my feet. a light unto my path. Unto my path. The grass withers, the, grass the flowers fade, the flowers but, the but the word of our God shall stand forever. This is my Bible, this is my weapon, the sword of the Spirit, amen. A grasshopper complex, a grasshopper complex. Here they were standing in the vestibule of possibility and promise. Behind them were the painful memories of Egypt. Before them were the prospects of the new land. Behind them was the tyranny of oppression. Before them lied the tranquility of freedom. Behind them were the flesh pots of Egypt. Before them was a land flowing with milk and honey. Behind them was want and need. Before them was satisfaction and plenty. Behind them was a history as resident aliens. Before them lied a stationary place that they could call home. God had promised their forefathers that he would give them a land to call their own. And now he was about to make good on that promise. Those who had begun this pilgrimage to the promised land hoping for this day were about to experience what their hearts had only longed for. These people were preparing to walk into a future that their parents had prayed for them to see one day. 
A future where they would no longer be subjugated to a lower social class. A future where they could aspire to become whatever they desire without the social and political restrictions imposed upon them by their oppressors. I can only begin to imagine the joy that flooded their souls as they envisioned uh, finding their rest in this new land that they would call home. Husbands and wives along with their children embracing one another with anticipation, awaiting the moment when they could call the new land home. Even those who had grown old were probably shedding tears of joy as they thanked God for fulfilling his word in their lifetime. They are all ready now. They are ready to at last engage and experience the long-awaited mystery. And so Moses assembles a reconnaissance team consisting of a member from each of the 12 tribes. He assembled this team for the purpose of spying out the land. For 40 days, this team was to traverse the length and breadth of the land, keeping record of its cities, its fruit, and people during their survey. They set out on this mission, traveling north and south, as well as east and west, in order to make a full assessment of the land. If y'all help me, I'll get you out of here. But upon their return, an assembly was called of all of the people so that they might hear the details of what awaited them in that land. And as the team began to give their report, they confirmed the fact that indeed this land flowed with milk and honey. They even brought back some evidence. They brought back some clusters, some huge grapes to confirm the richness of the soil and the type of yield that it would bring. And after re the report was given, the people received it with great optimism. And Caleb quieted the crowd. And he said, let us go up at once and take possession of it. For we are well able to overcome it. Spoken like a true champion. Spoken like a man full of faith. For he believed that with God on their side, possession was possible. Now, as much as Caleb had invoked inspiration and motivation, he had done this in the hearts of the people. There was a counter-narrative shared by who I want to call the timid ten. The men of the other ten tribes refuted Caleb's call to possession and began to tell the people that as much 
as the land had uh, was everything that they told them and more, possession was not possible. Look at verse 31. It says, but the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land. They said, the land through which we've gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. All the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. Now the tragedy, the tragedy in their narrative is that they are assigning impossibility to the promises of God. Are you listening to me? What are you talking about? They have allowed, they have allowed what they have seen to arrest their faith to the point that not only can they not believe what God has said, but also they have allowed their imagination to be arrested. For it is through the lens of sight and not faith, yet yeah, in which they are viewing life. Heretofore, they had been leaning and depending upon God ever since they left Egypt. Are you listening? I need three of y'all who know the story. Because they had witnessed God defeat and deliver them from a people, Egypt, who too were much stronger than them. God had already demonstrated that he would fight their battles and now here they stand on the threshold of a new beginning and decided that the voices of men are more credible than the voice of God they let the size of their opposition dwarf God in their mind See, they were looking at God through their challenges as opposed to looking at their challenges through their God. Yeah, some of the inhabitants were men of great stature. That was a fact. However, the question remains, how big is the biggest of men compared to God? See, it's important to note that fear uh, has a way of eclipsing God in our minds just like the moon can eclipse the sun as it shines on the earth now you know how that happens you know the, the moon is much smaller than the sun it's, even, it's smaller than the earth but every now and then they call it a solar eclipse where the moon will get in alignment between the sun and the earth. And even though it's much smaller, it can eclipse, block out the light of the sun. Now, now, now it's, it's impossible, it is possible to be intimidated by some things in life that we face that are indeed larger than us. I, I, I need to give us that. It's, we could be intimidated by some things. And the report of the stature of the inhabitants was not an exaggeration. Uh, just like there are some real things that we face in life that indeed are larger than us. So reporting this fact, that, that's not an indictment here. For we all can experience people and things that are very imposing in size. Their acknowledgement... Here's my argument. The acknowledgement of the fact is not the issue. 
the realities were genuine. However, when they began to define themselves in light of what they had seen, in light of what they believed to be an insurmountable challenge, this was a serious problem. See, listen again to what they said. They said, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. Now that, that's, that's, a, that's an indictment because God said that they were a chosen people. But they said they were grasshoppers. God said that they were his peculiar people. But they said that they were grasshoppers. God said that they were a royal priesthood. But they said that we were grasshoppers. God had already claimed and valued them enough to bring them out of bondage as his own possession. And here they are devaluing and discounting their worth. And to make matters worse, 